I suppose you come to sympathize with me, for indeed misfortune has taken possession of my house. I, I was just thinking that a, a number of my old acquaintance have been very unfortunate this year. Myself, dishonored and dead. Mercedes retired to the country. And Albert about to enter the army. At least they will not be poor. Oh, but they will. It seems they had scruples, something to do with tainted money guiltily acquired. They've given their entire inheritance to the hospitals. But surely that was an act of great nobility. Utter folly, I should have thought. Utter folly. Then there's myself, covered with ridicule through the villainy of Cavalcanti, Benedetto. And now... A new calamity? My daughter Eugenie has left us. Good heavens. The truth. You have neither wife nor children. How happy you must be. Do you think so? Poor girl. I doubt if her pride will ever allow her to return to France. At least she will have the sympathy of all her friends. Oh, indeed. I shall be a laughing stock. I can hardly bear to think about it. You're quite wrong, of course. And who would dare to ridicule a man of your affluence? You, the king of finance. You really think so? Oh, I'm positive. So long as your fabulous wealth lasts, uh, just so long, Baron d'Anglas, you are quite safe from public contempt. You're in the right count. As long as I'm able to put my signature to a piece of paper like this, you can call me a happy man. Which reminds me, when you called, I was on the point of signing five little bonds. I've already signed two. Will you allow me to sign the others? Oh, pray do so. Are they Spanish bonds? Oh, no, no. They're bonds on the Bank of France, payable to the bearer. Uh, have you many pieces of paper of this size, Count? Each worth a million? To the governor of the bank, please pay to my order from the funds deposited by me the sum of one million livres, Baron d'Anglars. One, two, three, four, five million. That's the way I... Conduct business. You no, know, this is really wonderful. Uh, particularly if, as you say, they are payable at sight. Oh, they are indeed. And to have five million in five little pieces of paper, it really has to be seen to be believed. Well, you shall be convinced. Take my clerk to the bank and you shall see him leave with an order on the treasury for the same sum. Oh, no, certainly not. And the thing is so curious that I'm determined to make the experiment myself. What do you mean? Uh, oh, oh, that money, uh, uh, I'm, I'm afraid, is already... But, my dear Baron Douglas, I'm credited with you for six million. I've only drawn one. You still owe me five million. Do you know you're a mind reader? I call on you this morning expressly to collect them. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, but uh, not that money. Forgive me, Count. Uh, what I mean, I'm indeed no mind reader. I owe that money to the new railroad company. It's a deposit I promised to pay this morning. Oh, you disappoint me, Monsieur Le Baron. However, since my need is just as great as that of your railroad company, I will take this, and you will have the added pleasure of signing new bonds for five million on the same day. Impossible. Well, then the railroad company shall wait until tomorrow. They can certainly afford it. Here's my receipt. You see, I came prepared. Received a bound on glad the sum of five million leave, which will be repaid whenever he pleases by the house of Thompson and French in Rome. Well, after all, why not? A favour to you, my dear Count. Your receipt is, after all, money. In any capital in the world. Goodbye, my dear Baron. Good day. Good day, Monsieur. What the devil do you want? Monsieur Beauchamp is here, Monsieur Le Baron. I wish us to speak to you. Beauchamp? Very well shown him. This way, Monsieur. Ah, Monsieur Beauchamp. Good morning, Baron Douglas. I passed our friend Monte Cristo on the stairs. Oh, yes, he wanted some money, a little matter of five million. Five million? Yes, he went away with the money in his pocket. You amaze me, Baron. I'm a financier, Monsieur Beauchamp. But to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? I wanted to interview you, to obtain your reaction to the news from Spain. I'm surprised you did not call before. After all, it is more than 48 hours since, uh, how shall I put it? My judgment and intuition brought me the rewards of a great financial coup. Do you consider yourself as a financial genius, Baron? The words are yours, Monsieur Beauchamp. I would express the matter more modestly. However, it is perhaps best to judge by results. Baron Dongla, if you had made a mistake and Don Carlos had not returned to Spain, what then? Would this have meant a crisis in your affairs? Monsieur Beauchamp, a successful banker, never gambles. But there are times, exceptional times, when he will take a, a certain risk. In this case, the degree of risk was infinitesimal. But it existed. It did. However, as events have proved, I was fully justified in the action I took. I see. A little bit 
Why this line of inquiry? If you came here wanting it... I came here, Monsieur le Baron, assuming that a man of your eminence would keep himself at least as well informed as a mere journalist. What are you saying? That you are not abreast of events. I am not abreast of events. For two days, Monsieur le Baron, fog in the Loire Valley has obstructed the telegraph. The fog has now lifted. The service is once more in operation. Well... I have had the latest reports. Don Carlos did not return to Spain. Barcelona did not rise in his favour. He is still in our custody at Bourges. It's a lie. And you are a ruined man. It's a lie. No, my dear Baron, it is the perfect truth. The news is escape. Uh, that was a telegraphic error. But it's true. I heard it from Madame de Villefort herself. Her father has dismissed her to a convent. Where is she now? At home. Under guard. This is one of the worst things I've ever heard. God forgive me, it is I who've done this to Valentine. No, do not speak thus, monsieur. Well, how should I otherwise? But it's true. When a woman loves, no sacrifice is too great for her. And there will be no sacrifice. What do you mean? I mean that you will marry your Valentine and that you will live happily ever afterwards. Oh, no, to jest at such a time. Maximilian, listen to me. You know that within the hour de Villefort is presenting the prosecution's case against Benedetto? Yes. While he is thus engaged, you will take Ali and go to the house of the Procureur du Roi and abduct his daughter. But this is madness. Ali, who is worth ten men in such a situation, will cover your retreat. One of my carriages will be waiting to take you to Marseille, where you will meet a man called Penelon, who will be waiting your arrival. Penelon? An old sailor who was once in the service of your father. Yes, I know that, but how do you know? Ask no questions. He will convey you in my yacht to the Isle of Monte Cristo, where I will join you within a matter of days. Trust me. But what you propose is sheer insanity. We wouldn't, we wouldn't travel more than 20 leagues before we were seized. Nothing of the kind will happen, my friend. Have you ever known me to fail in what I promised to perform? Never. But if you love your Valentine, do what I'm telling you to do now. But what is there to be afraid? Her father's vengeance. You're both safe from it already. Does that, the Procureur du Roi, conclude your indictment against the accused? It does, Monsieur le Président. We thank you, Monsieur. Accused, state your name and surname. Excuse me, Monsieur le Président. I claim to be in an exceptional situation and would beg that the order of the formal question which you're bound to address to me at this stage be reversed. <coughs> Very well, the court is prepared to indulge you in this, but only in this. What is your age? I'm 21. Or rather, I shall be in a few days. I was born on the 27th of September, 1817. And uh, where were you born? At Auteuil, near Paris. Auteuil. Mm -hmm. And uh, your profession? I've followed various callings. Lately, I've become an assassin. I see. Having confessed your guilt, you are hoping by the final revelation of your name to create an unparalleled situation. How well you read my mind, Monsieur le Président. That's precisely my intention. Well, what is your name? I cannot tell you, since I do not know it. But I know my father's name and can give you that. Well, well what is your father's name? My father is the Procureur du Roi. The Procureur du Roi. Silence. Are you playing with justice, accused? Gentlemen, God forbid I should insult the court. What I've said, I'm ready to prove. But in your examination, you call yourself Benedetto, an orphan, and claim Corsica as your country. I repeat, I'm the son of the Procureur du Roi, Monsieur de Villefort. I was born on the date I've given you, at 28 Rue de la Fontaine. As soon as the midwife delivered me, my father took me in his arms, telling my mother I was dead, wrapped me in a napkin marked with an H and an N, and took me into the garden, where he buried me alive. You asking us to believe that you were a newly born infant, you, you survived this ordeal? Well, of course. I wouldn't be here otherwise. The explanation is somewhat too involved. I've no wish to take up the court's time unnecessarily. Perhaps your ingenuity has failed you. By no means, Monsieur le Président. The truth never taxes one's powers of invention. We shall see. We shall see you, a self-confessed murderer, claim an illustrious man as your father. 
Your mother, no doubt, was equally illustrious. My mother, monsieur, thought me dead. No guilt attaches to her. I have not wished to know her name, nor do I know it. I, to this tissue of horrors you bring, I, I must admit a, a, a sort of conviction that without strong proof to sustain it, it's of little value as evidence. Proof? You demand proof? Certainly. Then look at Monsieur de Villefort. There lies your proof. I'm Edmond Dantes. Edmond Dantes. Very well, Beryl. Five million leaves. Are you staying long in Rome? Uh, no. So long enough to see the sights, no doubt. Uh, you're mistaken, Mr. Thompson. I did not come here to see, but to touch. Good day, monsieur. A very good day to you, Baron Longlar. My hotel. The devil. That's right, Excellency. I am he. Mr. Levins. Where are you taking me? To hell, senor. To hell. Monsieur? Valentine has gone. Oh, no, no, no. I'll find it, I swear. I'll find it. It was not my fault. Leave me, woman, leave me! But please let me explain. Don't worry. I'm going to find it. Now. now. Oh, God! For God's sake, give me peace! Stairs to the garden. Human wretch, this is torture. Torture, I'm not eaten for twenty four hours. Twenty four hours. Uh, just one moment, Excellency. Uh, here, people pay before they eat. Eh? Well, certainly. You have money, why should you not pay? Very well, I'm too hungry to care. How much? Uh, one million leave. Uh, a million leave, huh? That's funny. That's very funny indeed. Uh, you see, I can take a joke in the next. It's no joke, Excellency. 
You have five million livres in your pocket. You can afford to pay what we ask. A rich chicken and a bottle of wine. You're mistaken, you're a man. Brigands. Bandit. Bandit. I'll die of hunger. I'll die of hunger, sir. Very well, Excellency. Die. I know the sacrifice you have made. I know that you've given de Morcerf's fortune to charity and that you will take nothing from Monte Cristo. But this is the key of that humble apartment that young Dantes the sailor lived in a long time ago. He gives it to you now. This box contains the small treasures that he amassed against his wedding day. They're yours, because they were always yours. It often happens that a first fault destroys the prospects of a whole life. I believed you dead. Why did I survive you? What good has it done to mourn you eternally in my heart? I'm an evil omen to those who surround me. Mercedes. Should not speak so. You're a noble-minded woman. You deal with yourself with too much severity. Will you not even say that you will see me again? We must say farewell, Edmund. Let us part. Before I go, Mercedes, have you no request to make? I desire but one thing in the world, Edmond. The happiness of my son. I will do everything in my power to promote his happiness. Thank you. Thank you, Edmond. Something wrong with the food? No. Why is it wrong? Five million leave. Five meals. How shall I pay for my next? Oh, it's very simple, Excellency. If you can't pay, you don't eat. Then? But then, <laughs> I suppose you'll suffer hunger. And uh, after you've suffered long enough, I, uh, I suppose you will die. Let me live. Live here. Not liberty anymore. It's life. You're suffering. No. Oh. Christo. You are mistaken. And who are you? I am the man you sold and dishonored. I am the man whose betrothed you prostituted. I am the man on whom you trampled to raise to fortune. Because of me, de Morcerf has blown out his brains. Because of me, de Villefort has lost his reason. Because of me, you have lost your riches and may never return to your native land. I am Edmond Dantes. 
condemned you to die of starvation. You shall live. I have forgiven you because Is everything prepared to sail for Monte Cristo? Of course. But what about him? Let him go. But why? Why did you never tell me that it was you who saved my dear father's life? Because I grew to love you as I loved him. You gave me your friendship. And I valued it the more. Because I knew that it was not inspired by any gratitude that you might have felt had you known the facts. My friend. Tomorrow we feast. Tomorrow we shall see the married I did. Valentine. To you I give one half of my fortune as your dowry. Oh. Maximilian. To you I entrust the most precious possession a man ever had. Love her and protect her always. For now she will be alone in the world. Because I did. And tomorrow, you will assume your proper position in society. I restore to you your fortune and the name of your father. I will not allow my destiny to overshadow yours. Then you leave me, my lord. I did. And you're young and beautiful. Forget even my name and be happy. It is well. I shall obey. I shall forget even your name and be happy. What are you saying? I am young. I love the life you have made so sweet for me. And shall regret to leave it. I did. Do you mean that if I leave you... I must die, my lord. Yes. Do you then... love me? Not as your daughter. as a woman, as a mistress, as a wife. In these ways do I love you. Love me then, I day. Who knows? Your love might help me to forget those things I wish not to remember. There is neither misery nor happiness in the world. There is only the comparison of one state with another. 
He who has felt the deepest grief is best able to partake of intense happiness. And never forget that all human wisdom is contained in these two words. Wait. hope